Hello everyone. This video is about an uh, electronic instrument called a boxcar integrator. Uh, this is a fairly old instrument, uh, not seen that commonly these days. It's used to um, recover a repetitive signal or portion of a repetitive signal in the presence of noise, usually in most cases. Or it can be used uh, in the case of um, detecting a small portion of a signal after a certain amount of delay. So there are various modes of operation and this is a fairly complicated instrument to set up. But once set up, it actually is very easy to use. So let's go over uh, an example here. On the board on top uh, is a analog repetitive signal which has some, some uh, artifacts or some interest, interesting uh, properties to it which you know you may want to recover some portion of that to observe it carefully. And on top of this there could be noise, so you don't see the noise on this one, I'll just show you uh, the actual signal of interest. Um, to, to be able to recover a portion of the signal, in this case I'm uh, highlighting a small area here, uh, which is this negative uh, going pulse on, on this top of this waveform. Uh, I'm going to basically uh, use this machine called this integrator to, to trigger a certain event to capture this point and then uh, extract a DC value corresponding to this particular uh, artifact in the signal. The way it does that is I apply a synchronous um, clock to this, in, uh, to this box and that is used to basically sample the signal at this point repetitively and by averaging it, it uh, essentially cleans up any noise or any uh, other interference signals that may be sitting on top of it. In fact, this signal could be completely uh, buried in the noise or could be part of a, a much larger uh, set, of, set of waveforms that are actually hiding this particular waveform. So what it does is it creates, this instrument will create this sampling pulse and also will create a ramp as uh, shown here. Um, the ramp is adjustable, that is you can sweep over a longer or shorter period and also the sampling instant can be changed, can be moved around as well as its width to be changed. So by varying the width you can get uh, different averaging properties because essentially it's uh, just an averager. So it takes the signal and averages over the time period that it's being sampled on. So these two signals are internal signals, the ramp and the sampling signal. Whereas the input is the actual input to the box car and a, and a clock. In, it's also possible that if you don't have this, uh, this clock, this, you know, this indicator can generate a clock for you or a sampling signal. In, in which case you have to apply the sampling signal to the this device that is actually generating this analog signal. So it, all, uh, so it makes sure that everything is in sync in terms of the clock. So the only requirement is that the, the triggering signal has to be a multiple of the input signal. So it can uh, uh, basically hit this exact point all the time uh, without slipping or moving around, in which case it will average out to zero. So you want to make sure you're sampling exactly synchronously with respect to this uh, point. Now if you have a multiple of this clock, that is the clock is a multiple frequency um, sub-multiple that is of this uh, input, you will actually sample you know, every other edge or every third edge or every fourth edge depending on how slow this clock is. But it has to be repetitive in terms of uh, sub-multiple of that clock. Now uh, on the right side I'll show you uh, what this actually is, looks like. The, this this uh, instrument would actually just have a sampler which is this pulse driving an RC integrator. Um, of course it's much more complicated inside because active components, amplifiers, and you know, sampling switches and whatever, but it essentially is basically just boils down to this simple uh, schematic. And the way it works is, of course, you have uh, let's say you have this input which is shown here in the black, and as soon as the sample comes in, the, the sampling switch turns on. This uh, RC network charges up through this, the capacitor charges up through the R uh, resistance, and it uh, basically integrates out. 
and any high frequency noise will basically average out during this short period. This period is adjustable, so the you know the longer the period, the longer the sampling uh, event. So it averages out to a different value depending on what kind of uh, uh, superimposed noise or uh, artifacts are present on the signal. Now, if you want to uh, reconstruct a signal, what you can do is um, uh, basically sweep this pulse across the ramp. So if you move from left to right, you'll basically sample this point, this point, this point, this point, and so on until it reaches the, the end of the signal. So, and if you feed this averaged signal into uh, another instrument or uh, XY recorder, for example, you'll be able to reconstruct the signal even though there are other signals present on top of it. So that is the reconstruction uh, ability of the signal. The most, of course, important or most commonly used uh, uh, application is where you, you do essentially you delay uh, this sampling point based on certain edges of, uh, of the uh, uh, signal of interest. Uh, that can be done using a, a trigger and a delay, and the delay can be programmable. And of course, as we know, we can also change the sampling width, which uh, changes the AC properties of the recovery of that signal. So next I will go in and show you some actual experiments. Uh, I've got three experiments planned here and uh, we'll look at one uh, each one at a time. In this particular example, this is a sine wave I'm trying to measure which is very noisy. And I want to measure the amplitude at this point assuming there were no noise. That is only the frequency of interest is the sine wave but all the other components of the random noise that is on superimposed on this should be rejected by the instrument. So we want to find the peak value of the signal using some kind of instrument and um, there are ways to do it uh, like I said using a sample and hold uh, maybe a digital oscilloscope which has a gated kind of uh, sampling or what we used to have in the old days, olden days, was a boxcar integrator. So uh, I'll be showing you that instrument and how that is being used to measure the sine wave uh, at, at any given point in time during this, in this waveform. So what I have here are four signals. The first one, as I just described, is the input to the instrument or to the measurement. That is this uh, pink waveform, which is a sine wave. It has about 10% of added noise. Uh, which uh, makes it uh, very difficult to sample uh, but we don't want to filter this because you don't want to lose the amplitude of the actual sine wave and uh, you want to measure it in in its raw form as as much as possible now the the blue waveform is is the signal produced by this instrument called the boxcar integrator which is a, a basically a ramp that allows you to uh, select any point along this ramp to sample and that is adjusted on the instrument using uh, some uh, time uh, variables which I'll show you next. The actual sample point is shown by this green signal and uh, that signal is also tuned, tunable and uh, it can be, the width of the signal can also be adjusted. So you want to sweep, if you want to measure over a wider pulse or you can measure a very narrow pulse to, to basically reject certain types of noise, you can do that with this instrument. And the output that is uh, of the instrument is this DC level, which corresponds to the wave, to the peak of this, in this particular case, the peak of the sine wave. And of course, as you move this green pulse uh, around this ramp, you will be able to see different DC values. So that corresponds to the amplitude at that particular point in this sine wave. The input to this uh, instrument is, uh, is a pure sine wave as shown here uh, coming off this LaCroix uh, signal generator. Uh, the frequency is 100 kilohertz, the amplitude is uh, 1 volt and um, in addition as I've said I've added noise to it and um, the noise level is 9% uh, and um, I can adjust of course the bandwidth to make the noise worse that is to make it 100 megahertz that would filter out less of the noise. So um, that basically shows 
on top on the top scope the noise embedded uh, uh, superimposed on top of the sine wave next uh, I will show you my uh, box car integrator and that is this PAR 160 which is a fairly old instrument I haven't seen these much around um, there are a bunch of inputs as you can see and outputs it's a fairly complicated instrument to use and it takes a while to figure out I couldn't find any manuals for it so um, to describe you to you the actual uh, inputs and uh, controls uh, let's go over this one by one uh, the input on the left side is the external trigger which comes from the arbitrary waveform generator which is a narrow pulse that corresponds to 100 kilohertz I, I could use an internal trigger as well but uh, since I want to sync the 100 kilohertz to the to basically measure it synchronously I would like to do, do an external trigger um, I can also adjust the trigger delay using this knob uh, the threshold for the trigger is uh, shown here is a positive slope and I can adjust the level of that using this red knob and the actual trigger is uh, coming from the AWG is uh, this input you can also of course send the trigger out to some other instrument and uh, right now I have set up the, the instrument to do a scan uh, I'll show I'll uh, describe what that means you now in a little bit the time base is actually selects uh, if you use an internal trigger you can actually select the time base you want to use uh, which is would be uh, uh, which which of course corresponds to the amount of uh, width it will scan the particular waveform so i'm using an internal time base uh, and that is um, basically i can move that time base that ramp as i showed you earlier across the waveform and and I could also use an external time base uh, which would basically synchronize the time base to the signal and it would actually line up exactly where you want to but in this case it doesn't matter I will, that since the ramp is covers the whole signal uh, I can actually sweep across the whole particular waveform here the aperture time is, uh, is the, the width of the sampling area so that green pulse I showed you earlier uh, allows me to uh, basically select how wide that a sampling uh, interval would be narrower it is it will uh, find a very um, if you want to for example um, capture a very specific event on the sine wave um, you can actually tune that width of the pulse to to correspond to that area so if you have a fairly uh, slow signal you could, you could potentially use a wider pulse if you have a faster signal you would want to use a narrower pulse so you capture that area more precisely the scan delay actually allows you to move that position of the green pulse anywhere on that along the ramp so that gives you uh, the start and end points um, there's also a time constant which allows you to to basically do some filtering of the signal that means the the fast the, the shorter the time constant the less the averaging that takes place of the signal uh, so you basically retain that particular amplitude for a shorter period of time if I use a narrower uh, pulse, a narrower time constant. In this case, I've set it to um, a one microsecond. Uh, below that, here's is the scan rate, which tells you uh, if you want to scan across the waveforms, you can actually scan this. This green pulse will move across the ramp at a certain speed and that scan rate is basically controlled by this knob the, the, the faster you want to scan you use a lower scan rate uh, and basically it's this, um, this basically corresponds to time so it's actually inversely it's an inverse relationship so the higher the number it's the slower the scan this one uh, instrument this particular uh, control I haven't used much it's uh, it's some kind of a time constant which I'm not fully familiar with uh, maybe somebody can comment on what this does so on the right side uh, across this area is more on the input side for the signal itself so this is a pre-filter so um, in this particular case uh, I'm using a 1 megahertz uh, filtering time constant for the actual sine wave so anything if you want to uh, 
re reject some of the noise you could use a you know a sh uh, lower time cons uh, shorter time constant which will allow you to which will attenuate some of the noises but it will also uh, get rid of it will smoothen out the response of this instrument and uh, of course there's some coupling options dc ac and ground and then the shown below on the red knob and the input sensitivity is basically how sensitive you want this instrument to be in terms of the actual input level so in this case i've set it to 500 millivolts which is a good number considering i have a 1 volt uh, input and this input actually connects into this uh, in, uh, jack here the bnc 50 ohm terminated also have a high impedance uh, input 100k and there are some uh, options to zero the signal when there is uh, when you want to uh, calibrate it to zero with no uh, offsets coming in and uh, this one is a gated output that goes to the scope which is used to basically trigger uh, my scope as well and uh, the output of the actual dc signal that's coming off as shown on this scale on this meter is the same as the yellow curve or the yellow signal on the on the scope so now if i do a now right now i'm sampling at a fixed point like i said at the peak of the sine wave i could actually uh, go into a scan mode which uh, right now it's in hold as you can see here in the middle position and that basically is holding the the green pulse at a fixed point so uh, as you can see the the green pulse is not moving at all so if i want to scan for some reason then i can turn on the scan mode and then you will see the green mo green pulse moving across the ramp and you will also see this dc signal moving uh, along with that so let's do that so now it's actually scanning at um, at a rate of uh, 10 per minute so it's it's a fairly slow scan and i can show you the actual i can see the dc level slowly moving as it's sweeping across to the negative side of the sine wave it'll cross zero and then it will move to the negative side of the waveform Now it's uh, heading the negative side and it will peak on the negative side and come back to the positive side. And um, <clears throat> to show you that clearly, um, you can see that what's going on on the scope here. The green pulse is uh, traversing across to the right and uh, it's basically sampling the negative side of the sine wave in the presence of the noise. And it's basically not affected by the noise because it's... Uh, it's a very narrow uh, sampling interval and it's got averaging as well. I will show you the effect of noise and to show you that there's no effect of the noise on this actual measurement. So right now it's, of course, in the presence of noise, it's measuring a signal. It becomes obvious when you actually hold the signal, hold the sample point and then turn on and off the noise and you can see the effect very clearly. So it's going to the right and it'll It'll, once it's done sweeping the ramp, it will reset to the left and start the scan all over again. So it's approaching the peak of the scan uh, interval. And there, it started again from the left, so it's going to continue scanning. Okay, now I'm going to show you the effect of turning on and off the added noise and uh, to see if, the, if, that, um, if, this, if this instrument is actually capable of rejecting that noise. And uh, that is shown by the yellow curve, which is the DC level at this sampling point uh, right here and uh, close to the peak. So if I now turn off the noise, this yellow signal should not, should not change, uh, which basically says that all this random noise is not contributing to the DC to the sine wave actual uh, at this point so let's do that um, so the noise is gone we have a pure sine wave now 
and pretty much that yellow signal has has not moved now if, if i could show you the the meter display it's actually more clear on that because it's a very sensitive uh, uh, display but i'll show you that later in order to keep this uh, screen going here and show some other things before we uh, go back to the instrument itself so turning back the noise um, and you can see the yellow signal has not changed but the other thing I can do is to um, move the sample point up and down so right now this is close to the peak as you can see the yellow signal is moving around and if I move to the zero crossing point the, the yellow curve goes to zero that's basically where the sine wave is being sampled at the zero crossing point and that corresponds to this level three which is the zero level for this trace so it's very precise in that and you can of course sample manually any point in the sine wave you want to and if you had a more complex waveform where you have some some glitches or some some artifacts you want to do to zoom in and see this would be the way to look at that the other thing I can show you is the aperture time so I'm varying the aperture time as you can see and as I change the width you can see it's actually averaging over a wider trace so the signal actually moves and um, so that's the minimum width I can do and then there's more coarse settings for example so this is a much wider um, sample point so now it's capturing more of the negative side of the waveform so it's actually averaging over this entire uh, green portion so the output has dropped negative so going back to this one and going back to the original situation we are now at sampling near zero and of course the other thing I can show you is a pre-filter so as I filter the signal more you will see the effect on the DC actually will change the DC level actually decreases but since I'm sampling near the middle you won't see that so let's move the peak uh, away from the center so right now this is about the peak level as I'm adding more filtering the output starts to drop that's expected because you're actually limiting the fundamental that is the actual sine wave is actually being uh, reduced in amplitude as seen by the instrument so this is of course the raw signal going into the instrument here at 3 megahertz and above you can see there's no effect at all this is at 3 megahertz, this is at 1 megahertz it's at 300 kilohertz 100 kilohertz so the actual waveform is at 100 kilohertz so you'll see a significant reduction in the signal back to 1 megahertz here I can show you the scan also here uh, now going back to the scan mode and a much faster scan This is a scan of uh, two, which is uh, the fastest, one of the fastest scan speeds possible here. And then I'm going to hold it um, right at the peak. So this is the hold function. and of course I can do a single scan as well uh, or a repeated scan so right now I'm in repeating mode so that basically shows you uh, the this instrument let's go back to the actual instrument again and uh, show you the scanning so the DC meter is very very precise and it's of course much easier to see on this than on the scope and um, you can hold this as I said at any point and continue the scan if I need to uh, so this concludes uh, the presentation of the 
PAR uh, box car integrator. Uh, the model number is 160. Uh, there are several other box car integrators made by this company and, uh, and there are other companies today that makes it, make it as well, but it's not a very commonly found instrument. I guess it's uh, probably taken over by digital signal processing. Okay, now I'm going to show you a case where I have a small signal of interest, a small amplitude signal of interest, and then I'm going to add a bunch of uh, tones to it which are unrelated to that signal, um, which are much larger than the signal of interest. Uh, so basically you won't see, visually you won't see the signal of interest on the scope or in the, the instrument won't see it, but we still want to extract uh, the voltage at a certain point on that um, signal which is uh, of a certain frequency which we are interested in uh, but the rest of the um, so-called noise or uncorrelated components will actually overwhelm the signal that we are trying to measure and you will see that the this box car integrator can actually pull that out of the, all this mess that is there so i've got a um, case where i've got five tones as you can see um, the tone one is at uh, 135 kilohertz, uh, half a volt. Tone 2 is 73 kilohertz, same half a volt. Tone 3 is um, at 124 kilohertz. Tone 4 is 201 kilohertz. And tone 5 is 39 kilohertz. So the signal I'm going to put in is a 100 kilohertz, 50 millivolt signal. So it's going to be much 10 times smaller than any of these components and uh, it's of course not related to any of these uh, frequencies that are being uh, added to it uh, so let's do this um, <clears throat> so this is what it looks like this multi-tone five tone signal <clears throat> looks pretty random to me uh, so next I'm going to add uh, I'm going to create another signal which is the 100 kilohertz signal and uh, you can see it's uh, now 20 millivolts, so we'll make it uh, roughly 50 millivolts. <clears throat> Frequency 100 kilohertz, and the sine wave. I'm going to apply this to a resistive uh, adder network, uh, which is not shown. Right now, as you can see, there's no signal going in. The meter is uh, at zero, and uh, also the scope reads nothing. There's no 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 stimulus coming in so now you're going to uh, turn on the signal generator and let's let's turn on the noise first and that's the noise got five uh, multi-tone signal at different frequencies and now you can see it's on and and the scope is showing something uh, and then on the meter because it's 100 kilohertz, it's trying to look for 100 kilohertz signal, there's nothing coming out, it's zero as well. And everything is now uh, waiting for the real signal to show up. Okay, so let's turn on the, the real signal. Okay, that signal is on, the trigger has come on, and you can see the scope is now found uh, the ramp and it's creating the pulse and the pulse is located right now exactly very close to the zero crossing of the 100 kilohertz signal so now if I turn off the noisy signal you should see just the uh, uh, real signal here if you want to look at and that's that signal okay and the meter is reading zero the output is also zero from the yellow signal and I'll turn back on the noise so um, seeing something here it's offset uh, that obviously means uh, there is a, some component of this noisy signal that is uh, showing up at the 100 kilohertz rate not sure exactly why 
Okay, let me increase the bandwidth of the incoming signal so all the noise components are there. Okay, and now uh, increase the bandwidth to 100 megahertz from the signal generator so it's now sending everything and there's no um, attenuation of the high frequencies in there. And now both the meter and uh, the scope show very close to zero on the yellow curve which is what we want to see. Now uh, we want to look at just the effect of sampling different points of the sinusoidal signal so I'm going to move the sampling uh, point which is the green the green uh, spike in the first on uh, the top window you can see the output is now going negative as I sweep through the negative part of the input and I keep going it comes back to zero and then goes to the positive side and it returns to zero again so on this one on the meter you can see the same thing going on goes to the positive zero negative zero back to positive so we are sweeping through one whole uh, period of the input signal the sinusoidal signal so that uh, basically shows how sensitive this meter is I'm on the 100 millivolt scale as you can see uh, and it's producing a decent output in presence of uh, almost half a volt of different components of noise and if I remove that signal again you're back to the clean sine wave and you'll see the same thing going on if I sweep across this thing So this is a demo of, uh, of measuring a signal in the presence of noise and to precisely identify a point uh, where you want to track it and so uh, not many instruments can do this kind of thing. This is the final experiment uh, which I'm going to show you. Uh, this is going to be an uh, interesting one, um, probably more interesting than the previous ones I showed. Here um, I'm trying to recover a signal, reconstructed basically, in the presence of a lot of other signals which are uncorrelated to the signal. So basically the box car integ integrator will reject those interfering signals and only uh, pick up the signal that is repetitive, even though it's not a sinusoidal signal this time it's going to be a random signal but it's going to be repetitive uh, anything that is repetitive can be recovered by the box car integrator in the presence of non-repetitive uncorrelated signals so have the same uh, input interfering input of uh, the five tone signal uh, that's on channel two and channel one has the real input i want to measure um, it's a 200 millivolt signal and the interfering signal is uh, quite large uh, in the order of several uh, hundred millivolts. Now this is what the composite signal looks like, uh, the pink curve. Uh, basically it's it's got the interfering signal which is uncorrelated so it's the, you can see it's not synchronized or it's not static on the oscilloscope. On the top uh, screen or the top uh, data cube you can see the ramp that I want to uh, uh, apply to this uh, box car integrator along with the sampling gate which is the green signal. So let's start the experiment and um, see what happens. <coughs> to recover the signal I'm going to actually plot this on a XY recorder and it's right now uh, idle and uh, once I turn on the scanning mode, it will uh, the the box car integrator will produce a X, uh, which is the time output as well as the output from the from the recovered uh, signal, which is going to be that uh, signal of interest. So I'll have to now turn on the box car integrator and see what goes on.
as you can see the, the actual signal is being traced on the paper and it's a fairly clean signal in the presence of all this random noise or random components of interfering noise and I will show you the actual signal after this plot is done to compare it with the, what I'm getting here So basically it will keep uh, redoing this plot on top of each other until I stop it. So let's uh, look at the actual signal here. <coughs> and so that's the real signal that I was scanning and you can see it looks pretty much like the signal on the paper and you can just now see how versatile this box car integrator can be to uh, recover embedded signals and noise or, or to basically reject noise if there's something on it on a signal so there are a lot of applications uh, reconstruction is one of them and this is the final uh, experiment i wanted to show regarding that thank you